What up, everybody? Happy Tuesday, and welcome back to the Commander's Film Room, where we talk all things Commanders and break down the film. Um, I'm here with my co-host, Mark Bullock. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing very well, thanks. And yourself? I'm doing very well, man. Can't complain. I'm also here with Nick Ackridge. How are you doing, Nick? Pretty good, pretty good. Cool. So we're explored in part two of our free agency series. We'll be looking at Bobby Wagner today, as well as Austin Eckler and Jeremy Chin. Uh, before we dive into it, I want two questions to kind of pose to the group to have a little conversation before we get started. So... You know, it's been a whirlwind, guys. The past week has been crazy in regard to the Washington Commanders. Um, we've had a major uh, roster change. Uh, over the last week, we've had 20 different additions to the team, but only four players retained from the previous rosters that are re-signed. Uh, those guys were Jamison Crowder, Jeremy Reeves, Cornelius Lucas, and F.A. Obata. Um, Mark, I'm going to throw it over to you first. Like, What's your overall impressions of this whole free agency period? Do you think Washington's been pretty prudent with their decisions? Has they been pretty smart? Anything you're concerned about still? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think the overall most important takeaway is that they've had a good process. Um, they haven't gone out and spent all the big bucks on you know the big name players. They haven't gone and made a huge trade for a, a T Higgins or you know uh, whatever and, and and locked anyone into being a, a a big contract for the next five years, right? It, I think the longest contract they've given out is a three-year deal. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and even then, those three-year deals are fairly manageable. Um, so they've kept themselves pretty clean cap-wise, um, but they still have managed to add some good players, um, and they're taking some shots on a few guys on, on one-year deals, giving them a chance to you know, prove themselves and, and earn bigger contracts down the road, either here or elsewhere, um, which is always a a good motivating factor to get good performance out of players. Um, and they've gone for guys that, you know, fit what they're going to try to do. Um, and with the history that Quinn and, and Witt have on the defensive side of the ball, at least, you know that they're going to adapt their defense to fit the personnel that they have because we've seen them do that. Obviously, Quinn had success with that Seahawks cover three system. Um, and then when he went to Dallas, he recognized that the league has moved on and, and adjusted his systems to play a lot more aggressive man coverage and lots of blitzing and that kind of thing. Um, so he's capable of running lots of different systems and having success with that. Um, so that suggests that the guys that they're bringing in are guys that they feel have fits within whatever system they want to run and they can adapt whatever system they want to run to those players um, as opposed to, you know, the last regime where, where they sign a man corner and play him in zone or they <laughs> then draft a zone corner and play him in man, you know? So, um, I think overall the, the process is really good. Um, and even if it, it could well be in two or three years time, only one or two of these free agents have, have, have panned out. Um, and even if that is the case, you can still have confidence that the process getting to signing these guys is good. And that's the important thing for, for long-term success. I agree. I think walking away from free agency from the first week for me is that there seems to be a long-term plan. It seems to be kind of like a vision about where Washington wants to go. Uh, there are some scheme fit. You know, like as a person I worked with before, I kind of want them on my team again, which is also nice. But I also like the actual versatility of like, hey, you know, if the plan doesn't work, if the contract doesn't work, then it's not going to sink us in regard to finances down the road. So I do like that. Um, Nick, is there anybody that kind of like stood out to you as like a really big acquisitions you really like maybe you're discouraged by like you know like why did Washington pick that person up what are your thoughts on that no there wasn't really anyone that I was like what are we doing here mm -hmm. uh, all of them kind of made sense to me mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Eckler one but again it's 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 really cheap and there, there's not a like you said there's like almost no downside to it mm -hmm. um, but yeah again like Mark said there's there's a process and I like that even though they had the most cap space, they're not just spending it all just to spend it all. I mean, they still have the most cap space and also have also signed like the most people. So um, it's kind of good to know that they're still kind of being frugal with, with how they spend that um, while kind of trying to rehaul this, this roster that was, was in a pretty bad spot. Mm. Uh, 
we've all seen the clip of Adam Peters being silent when he was asked about <laughs> the roster. <laughs> Awkward pause, exactly right. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I I understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and I think they're they're setting themselves up well. Very good. All right, last question before we jump into the film. So. You know, last time we talked to you, Sam Howell was on the roster. He was, you know, our, actually was our starting quarterback last year. And there was talk about whether he'd stick around, be a quarterback two, quarterback three, mm-hmm. working with Drake May. There was some confusion there. Um, Mark, we'll start off with you. So we saw Sam Howell traded for – we traded away Sam Howell in a fourth and sixth round pick and returned for a third and a fifth. So there seemed to be pretty good return in regard to that. Well, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think he should have been traded? Do you think there was a world where he could have stayed here in Washington? Or are you happy with the results? What are your thoughts about the same Howell trade altogether? Uh, I, I think what I've come away from that deal with was that they it, – it's all about the long-term management. And, um, you know, they're going to draft a quarterback this year. That's fairly obvious. And, and if you're drafting a quarterback second overall, he's going to be your guy. Um at least for the next few years. Sam Howe's contract runs out in two years. He's not going to re-sign with the team that just drafted a replacement for him. So um, he's not going to be here long-term. So in that situation, you might as well try to get long-term assets and and making a trade, getting something back for him now um, when he has two years of control rather than one year of control, as we have seen with the likes of Justin Fields, um, where his value was greatly depreciated because he only had one year of control left and then you have to pay him. Um, with how you have two years of control, so you're, a team kind of doesn't have to necessarily start him right away like the Seahawks. They don't have to start him right away. They can let him sit. They can let him develop. They can see what they have in him. And if they maybe like him, then this time next year, they're, they're going into next year with him competing for the job. So um, I, I think that provided better value than anything they were going to get in the future because he probably wasn't going to play this year unless someone got hurt. Um, and so you you might as well get the value while you can. Um, so I, I think, again, it, it points to a long-term viewpoint from this front office. Um, and, uh, yeah, you might as well get assets for him if, if he's not going to be in that long-term plan. I think for the first time in a long time, Washington actually kind of maximize their assets. Typically, they kind of wait till the contract runs out or don't necessarily get great trade value back. So I feel like Washington did take advantage with that for sure. Um, Nick, what are your thoughts on Howard? Do you think there was a world where he could have potentially stayed here? And are you happy with the trade? Or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think once they signed Mariota, I think the, the writing was was kind of on the wall for him. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they're obviously going to draft one at two. And then, um, you know, you have him, Mar- 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 Mariota there and, yeah, like Mark said, you're you're getting better assets for it now. If you wait a year, you're not getting a top 100 pick. I mean, I know, mm-hmm. I know that we're you know trading basically moving up two spots with with the two kind of pick swaps there. But you know, a top 100 pick is is massive for someone that probably was not going to play this year. Absolutely. Um, so you know, I, I think it was it was time to move on. He wasn't their guy. He wasn't drafted by them. So they have unfortunately no loyalties to him. But um, you know, I think he. I was kind of, you know, always a little farther down on Howell than a lot of other people. I think at the start there was some hope there, and I was a huge fan of him coming out of college. But um, yeah, he just couldn't shake the whole sack issues. Couldn't that was kind of the the big thing there. And um, but I think he's kind of shown that he can stick around and kind of be a long term sort of backup guy in the NFL that you know might bounce around some teams, but again can come in in a, in a spot start situation and make some plays because I mean he definitely made some for Washington here, and um, yeah. Yes, he did. So best of luck to him. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to pivot over to our game film. We're going to start looking at uh, Bobby Wagner, Austin Eckler, and Jeremy Chin. These guys are all polarizing, in my opinion. He's probably the biggest free agent names that we actually picked up over the um, offseason. And, you know, we don't know what they have left. Like, obviously, these you know, five years ago, these guys may have been marquee stars. But what do they have left in regard to that? So we're actually going to focus on that and break it down. And um, the one I'm most intrigued about is Bobby Wagner. So I'm going to throw it over to Mark right now. We're going to start off with him. Yeah, so we'll, um, we'll start off with Bobby Wagner. And, yeah, he is the one that everyone is – Obviously, he's the big name, and, and he's been one of the best linebackers for the last decade in the, in the NFL. Um, and, and so he's had a, a very good career, and obviously he's coming towards the end of that. And then the question is, what does he have left? Um, and when I went back and, and watched some of Seahawks film, and, and specifically Bobby Wagner, um, I think there is still enough there that 
you're going to get good play out of them this year. It's certainly better play than they've had a linebacker for the last few years. Um, so, and, and that is granted a, quite a low bar, but um, he's certainly going to be uh, better than what they've had. So, um, and this is a good example of that. And, and something that um, we haven't really seen in Washington is we've got Bobby Wagner here as the Mike linebacker. And um, the issues that Washington have, have had with the Mike linebacker is they always, whoever they put there has always been slow at being able to process the information happening in front of him before then playing. Um, so when Jamin Davis played Mike, you'd often see him paused at the snap and trying to diagnose, okay, where's this guy going? Where's that guy going? Do I need to make any checks? And then the ball would be snapped and he'd be stood in place. Whereas Bobby Wagner, as you'll see here, anticipates exactly what's happening. They they bring a tight end in motion across the formation here and he's going to come and, and try to block um, on this side. And then Wagner, you can see he's already looking out here, seeing the guy in motion. Um, and he's instantly going to going to know as soon as his ball snapped, he knows this tight end's coming across the block and, and the run's coming this side. And he, he immediately flows over there to make the play. So um, you'll see that here. I'll run this on. He immediately spots the tight end coming out and the, and the run going there. And he's... He's one of the first to get across here. You can see this is the other linebacker that hasn't even diagnosed and read what's going on. And Bobby Wagner's already over there and, and almost in position. And he slides across. And again, you can see just the, the contrast in positioning. Wagner started over here. His other linebacker started on the hash mark. And, and Wagner's the one that's going to be there making the play before his teammate. Um, and you'll see it again from the end zone angle. You'll get a slightly cleaner look of it from him. Um, again, his head's turned out here. When, when they motion that, he knows that that tight end's coming across and he's going to try to block this side. And as soon as the ball snapped, Wagner's moving across and he's already two or three yards forward. And, and the other linebacker is, is kind of stood still waiting to see what's happening. Um, and this is kind of what Jamin Davis was doing when he was Mike linebacker or at the start of the last year, this is what Cody Barton was doing when he was line, Mike linebacker. They, they were too busy sitting there kind of processing what exactly is happening and they weren't getting into position quickly enough. And, and that's what, Wagner has seen thousands of looks, thousands of motions, thousands of more formations. He knows what's coming. Um, and he knows how to study exactly what the, the tendencies are and, and where the ball's going. So um, again, as, as soon as the ball snapped, he's already straight away getting into position, gets across to the other side of the line, uh, beats his teammate to the ball and goes and makes the tackle. Um, so that in itself is just a, a huge upgrade from what they've had at, at yeah, Mike I mean linebacker. Like we talk a lot about anticipating with, when it comes to quarterbacks, but linebackers is, is kind of similar. Like he's anticipating what his keys are going to be instead of, you know, reading and then reacting. Like he knows what's going to happen. And it's just such a flip from what we've seen these past couple of years. Um, like Mark said, there's not a front, there's not a motion. There's nothing that he hasn't seen. Um, I mean, a thousand snaps like every year of his career, basically. So he's going to know exactly what's coming before it happens every single time. I think that's the one thing we can kind of take away from Wagner as well. He's kind of a coach on the field because like, the intangibles, like hopefully he can kind of untap some of the missing parts with Jamie Davis's game too. That'd be great. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and, and so we've got another one here where um, there, there's a little bit question of, you know, is he fast enough to still make an impact? Is he still athletic enough to make an impact? And and here you've got Rams running a, an outside zone to the right here. Uh, Wagner is, is lined up between the right tackle and the tight end. Um, and, and they've got a couple of extra blockers on two receivers as the line tight. So it's kind of a hint that they they might be running that that way. Um, and again, Wagner anticipates the run and he starts working outside and maybe a younger Bobby Wagner runs straight through this gap and penetrates and makes this play in the backfield. But he doesn't, he has lost a little bit of a step. He's not what he once was, you know, five or 10 years ago, who, who among us are. Um, but he, he, rather than just sprinting straight through this gap and, and trying to make this tackle, he, he's wise enough to know that he has limitations and so he stays patient. Um, and you can see him here just holding his position because he knows the running back has an important decision to make here. Does he bounce this run outside and try to keep pressing to the edge or does he try to make this cut back? And if he tries to cut this back, Bobby Wagner is the guy that's going to have to fall back into this gap here to try to make that play. So he just holds his position makes the back declare where he's going to go and then works off of that. So the back ends up deciding that he's going to bounce this run outside. And once he's made that decision, Wagner then knows, okay, he's not cutting this back back here now. He's coming outside and I can flow freely to the edge and, and go make the play. 
Um, That's a great so it's, again, it's, it, it's understanding, you know, he's he's a smart player and, and he doesn't necessarily have the same athleticism that he once had. Um, he's still a decent athlete, um, but the the mental sharpness is what makes up for it. Um, There's a What I took away from that one little clip was a great pursuit angle, kind of like kind of he corralled the right running back from getting too wide and he was smart enough to kind of break it down and kind of anticipate where he was going next. It seemed like he was poised with his pursuit, which is great. Yeah, uh, and he could have, as I say, a younger Bobby Wagner might have seen that first gap and just sprinted through it and tried to make a tackle and a younger Bobby Wagner probably would have been good enough to do that, but <laughs> some linebackers do try to do that and they shoot the gap and they go too quickly too early and it, it gives the back a chance to cut their run back early. Um, Wagner played that patiently and, and ended up with a good result um, because of it. Mm -hmm. um, so here we've got a, a different type of, of run. Um, it's going to be they're trying to make it look like a, an inside zone run, but they're actually running a, a gap scheme with a, a tight end pulling across. And, and Trent Williams is here at left tackle, and he's actually re responsible for down blocking Bobby Wagner. And I would not want to be anyone in this position watching Trent Williams trying to down block me, but um, Bobby Wagner isn't phased by it. And uh, again, you see here, you've got the, the fullback and the tight end coming across to kind of kick out the, the edge defenders here. And uh, Trent Williams is kind of try to work down the line and, and pin Bobby Wagner inside and and Wagner at this point kind of identifies okay I've got the tight end and the fullback sifting back across this way this run is actually rather than coming up the middle it's curly, curving back that way so I need to get out there um, but as he starts to work that side he's suddenly got this monster of a man Trent Williams right in front of him um, and obviously most of us would run away scared over here because Trent Williams is a monster <laughs> a but beast, yeah. uh, he does a nice job of shedding this block real quickly he, he anticipates Williams uh, coming to him and he kind of shifts inside jumps inside uh, drops his hands and, and kind of pulls Trent Williams uh, over and then he uses a nice swim move to to get through um, so that tosses kind of Trent Williams aside which again you just don't see many people do but but Wagner's an experienced vet he knows how to get off blocks real quickly um, and then he's again he's able to get back across in position to to go make that tackle and, and keep the game to a minimum. Um, and, you know, shedding blocks is just something that he's still very, very good at. And he might not be as fast or as strong as he once was, but the technique is just fantastic. And, and so here, this time, they are, again, they're running a wide zone to, to Wagner's side. The right guard's going to try and climb up and, and block him. Um, and down here, in obviously, in the red zone, um, you, you're very vulnerable. If you don't make this play, there's, there's a big chance of a touchdown. Um, and again, he just he gets the the lineman to commit to trying to block him, and then he skips outside and, and makes his target small, and and, and then uses a little swim move to, to get past him and, and gets the pulls the lineman off balance and skips by him and reemerges in that gap. And, and you can see if if he gets kicked out there, there's a, there's this lane here for McCaffrey to work through and then score a touchdown. But because he shed the block, he's able to fill the hole, make the tackle get a stop on the goal line um so as a run defender i have no issues at all with with bobby wagner uh, he's going to be a huge upgrade for washington um especially as a, as a mike um and um he may have lost a little bit of a step uh physically but mentally he's more sharp than ever and and so as a run defender i don't think there's any issues i think he'll be a fantastic player um the question then becomes how is he in coverage? Um, and, and that's a fair question to ask. Again, the the athletic ability at his age um, is always something that defenses are going to look to exploit. Um, but Wagner still excels in, in certain areas of coverage. And um, one of the most popular ways you'll see teams attack uh, the middle of the field where linebackers play is on play action. Um, and this is a very common way of doing it. What the Lions are doing here, Shanahan's have been doing it for decades and uh, McVeigh's and, and all of those guys that's half the NFL's offense now um, do these kind of play action passes where they get try to get these linebackers to bite up and then they run a, a crossing route um, deep over or uh, a deep in or something like that um, across the middle of the field in behind where those linebackers are meant to be um, for a nice big game with yard after catch potential um but bobby wagner as we kind of talked about there's not a play that he hasn't seen he's, he's been in the nfl for a decade he knows what's coming um and he knows that when offenses 
aren't running the ball, they're probably trying to run a play action. Um, so what he does here is um, we see the ball snap, they run the play action, he doesn't bike too heavily on it, he takes one step forward, but you can kind of almost see him already anticipating this isn't actually a run play. And you can kind of tell from the linemen are, are backing off rather than coming towards him. Um, he gets a pretty good indication that actually this is a play action pass and you can kind of already see him ready to bail out of this. Um, and he immediately bails out of it and then he uses what's known as a, a robot technique where you kind of roll over and back and then um, you turn your back to the quarterback and you just look for the threat of the crossing route because again, that's that's what offenses look to do off of play action. They look to attack the middle of the field because they want the linebackers to bite up and vacate that middle of the field. So Wagner immediately turns his back to the quarterback, not worried at all about what he's doing. He's just looking for who's this threat that's going to attack the middle of the field. And you can see as he does that, he's, he's sprinting back up that hash mark that you can spot. Ah, there, there's my threat. There's the receiver breaking over the middle. That's where the ball's trying to go to. Um, so once he spots that, he just kind of matches that route, gets himself in the throwing lane. Uh, he doesn't go too immediately straight to the receiver. He understands the receiver is going to be breaking over the middle. So he keeps, again, he keeps himself in the throwing lane for if the quarterback wanted to throw out in front. Um, and you'll see from the end zone angle here that um, Jared Goff was 100% looking for that route. Um, you get to the top of the drop here. Jared Goff's looking straight down the middle of the field, wanting to hit this over route. And again, Bobby Wagner is right in that throwing lane. He attaches it to it nicely. And, and Goff wants to hit it, but he just can't. Wagner's in the way. And that makes Goff have to kind of scramble, hold onto the ball, scramble, and it results in a sack. Yeah, um, I like the angle he took there. If you go yep. back to the um, – when he takes it, angle. a lot of times you see a lot of linebackers run straight at where the right wide receiver is to try to cut that off because they sort of panic a little bit. But, um, again, he knows where this route is intended and where it's going and takes that really nice angle to kind of cut that off. Because, again, if, you, if he That's runs straight angle. back – a good quarterback can hit that throw and know that he's doesn't have a chance but again it's bobby wagner so he knows that yep. route is not going to be thrown at that certain time and takes a good angle exactly um and so this is something that pops up consistently again this is half the nfl offenses in the league are, are running some kind of shanahan style system uh, so this is what they do um, and so Wagner is still very effective with this. I and mean, this is this is the same game against the Lions, but uh, there's plenty of examples when when they've played other teams uh, like the 49ers or the Rams or whatever. Um, you get that same kind of over route this time from a slot receiver. Um, and again, Bobby Wagner is going to uh, initially step forward on the run fake quickly after one step. Recognize actually this isn't a run. This is a play action. He's going to again turn his back look for where the threat is he identifies the slot receiver as the threat and he again kind of bends his his um path back into the throwing lane and and this time because the receiver's coming towards him he knows he can actually open up and get his eyes back on the quarterback because um he knows the receiver's coming towards him and, and he's going to cover that zone um so again the quarterback can't throw that ball he's under pressure and he immediately has to kind of take the check down uh, to the running back in the flat to avoid getting sacked. Um, so again, it's just a great example of a really experienced guy that understands how defenses look to attack offenses, um, yeah. uh, sorry, offenses look to attack defenses and, and, and understanding where the threats are and taking them away. Absolutely. Um, I think just kind of watching him, he seems pretty fluid for the most part. Like, you know, maybe he lost a step when he, you know, from his 20 year old self, but the, the savviness where he can kind of like take the better angles to prevent these passes are actually was pretty strong in regard to that. Um, my question to both of you guys would be how do you think the linebackers are going to kind of play out? Like, do you think Bobby Wagner is still an every down linebacker? Do you think he would probably primarily play the mic? Do you think Frankie Lee was going to be doing something else? Like, what are your, what are your takeaways in regard to the, the dynamic of our linebacker group coming forward? What do you guys think there? <clears throat> All I know right now is that Bobby Wagner doesn't come off the field unless Bobby Wagner wants to come off the field. <laughs> okay. uh, All right. I mean, it, literally almost a thousand snaps every single year of his career. I don't see that stopping now. I don't see why it would stop now. Mm -hmm. um, and the question kind mm -hmm. of turns to what you do with Luvu and, and Davis. Yeah. Um, don't run a lot of three linebacker sets. We've talked multiple times now how Dan Quinn last year used a lot of safeties and corners and that was more kind of out of a necessity. So I don't know if it's going to be something that he does again this year. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it isn't because of how we've seen them sort of attack the, the linebacker position. But um, yeah, Bobby Wagner will not come off the field. Um, and then it kind of turns to more what you want to do with Lubu. And 
if you want to kind of use him more as a pass rusher at times, then you bring Davis onto the field. Mm-hmm. Um, or you just kind of sit with 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 Wagner and Lubu as your, your two linebackers and nickel. Yeah, it sounds like Davis is going to be one with a little bit of a snap pinch a little bit, right? Kind of like my first assumption. Like Mark, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't I don't think Bobby Wagner will be coming off the field. If anything, just for logistics. If, if he's the one with the green dot in his helmet, on his helmet and he's got the speakers in his headset hearing the play call, if he's coming off on third downs, that means they then need to switch the helmet with Luvu or Davis or whoever else would then call the plays, right? Um, so if he's coming off the field, someone else needs to put the green dot on. Um, mm-hmm. And then then you're having Frankie Luvu have to run to the sideline on third down after making a tackle from the opposite side of the field on second and 10 or whatever. And he's going to have to come across, change his helmet and get back on the field to go make the call play ball, right? Um, so logistically, it just makes it awkward. And, and maybe you could get around that by giving Luvu the green dot and having him call the play in the huddle and then letting Bobby Wagner take over at the line of scrimmage. You could possibly do that, um, but then it gets a little bit of a uh, muddy way of doing things. So, um, yeah, I think Bobby Wagner will be on the field um, as the Mike linebacker. As, as Nick said, I think Luvu will... My guess is Luvu is going to be more of a pass rusher than a, a pure linebacker, um, which would mean if they do want to keep two linebackers on the field, um, you, you'd have Davis as the will linebacker or the weak side linebacker, and, and Luvu kind of be as this roaming pass rusher um, that kind of lines up all over and, and, and rushes. Um, similar to the Michael Parsons role, I guess you could say, but obviously want to caveat that with he's not Michael Parsons. Um, <laughs> Sounds like you're saying nope. he is Michael Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what I got from it, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, la- so, last time we talked before the Wagner signing, we were kind of trying to figure out what they were going to do with Luvu and Davis and, you know, who was going to be the Mike and all that sort of stuff. And it didn't really make too much sense at the time, but now it obviously does make sense if, you know, Bobby Wagner was, was the, the guy the whole time. That's great plan. And before we move on, I just want to thank the 1,054 people that are watching across all platforms on YouTube, Twitch, and uh, Twitter. So thank you guys for jumping on. Uh, feel free to jump in the chat and ask us any questions. Mark and Nick will do their best to answer. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sorry for Mark. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. You got it. Uh, yeah, so the the big concerns then is uh, Wagner is obviously still a very good run defender and he is very alert to play action and, and knows how to handle play action stuff. So the big question is how does he handle real drop back passes um, and, and the way that teams tend to attack linebackers in coverage now is, is they'll like to go like we see here with the 49ers, they'll go with an empty formation, they'll line up their best receiver or one of their be- best receivers in Debo Samuel here inside um, and that will match him up with the linebacker because the defense has to spread out with an empty formation um, and the linebacker is still going to stay in the middle of the field unless they're playing pure man coverage then he's going to go and match up the tight end but um, if you're playing any kind of zone um, he's going to stay in the middle of the field because he's a Mike linebacker and that's going to leave him trying to have to cover Devo Samuel in the slot which is obviously a bad matchup it's a tough matchup for any linebacker um, so that's, it's not exclusive to Wagner, but this is just some of the ways that he might be attacked. Um, and you can see here, he just kind of runs a little pivot out. And as I'll run this through, I don't think Wagner does a, a bad job here at all, really. Um, Debo makes a nice cut here and, and he gets a, a little bit of separation, but, but Wagner's pretty much there the whole way. Um, and yeah, he gives up the catch. I, again, I would think probably 90% of linebackers probably give up the catch to Debo Samuel um, in that kind of situation. He's there to make the tackle pretty pretty quickly. Again, yeah, he gives up a first down, um, but it's, it's something that I think most linebackers would end up giving up a first down. I, I think he did a relatively good job in that situation, and it's a tough situation for a linebacker to be put into. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that type of play. The one I'm more concerned about is, is this one here, and um, this is the kind of thing where his athletic drop off, if you will, um, kind of shows up. Um, they're, they're playing zone coverage here. He's going to drop into an underneath hook curl zone. Um, and they've just got a little uh, underneath route with Christian McCaffrey on the opposite side of the field. Um, so this isn't Bobby Wagner's assignment at all to start off with here. Um, but he's going to just drop back into, into his zone. Um, and you can see him zoning off here. And the ball is going to come underneath Christian McCaffrey. Um, but the Bobby Wagner of old is going to close in real quick on McCaffrey and go make a tackle and keep this game to four or five yards, right? Um, the Bobby Wagner now is just that little bit slower, 
he's probably a yard or two behind where he normally would be if well where he would have been if he was three or four years younger um and that gives McCaffrey just that little bit of extra space and obviously McCaffrey is a very good player um especially in space um and he's just going to kind of loop around Wagner and, and use his uh athletic upside over Wagner here to to kind of scoop around him and, and Wagner's not able to redirect quickly and he kind of gets run by and gives up the first down um and, and needs his teammates to make the play so that is that's the area where I would have more concern with him is in space trying to make tackles um he he missed more tackles this year than um you would think a, a Bobby Wagner type of player would do uh, but it's more in these kind of situations that I just talked about where uh, he's kind of zoning off and the ball's not going to a guy that he's covering so the issue isn't his coverage the issue is they're checking the ball down underneath and, and he's one of the guys underneath it and then has to rally to the ball and obviously other defenders have got to be involved in it as well it can't just be one guy um but the Bobby Wagner of old probably makes this tackle here at the 35 um whereas now he's he's kind of having to step step off uh give uh, give McCaffrey a little bit of extra room so that he has time to adjust himself um and he still gets outrun um and gives up the first down so for me that would be the concern of of where I am with with Wagner is um when he's has to break down and try to make a tackle in space he, that's where the athletic issues the athletic drop off shows up more often than anything else in terms of a run defender he's still fantastic on play action he's still really good um, and even in coverage, I think he's still pretty solid. Um, it's just when when that ball's checked down underneath and he's trying to force to make a tackle in space, um, that's where the athleticism um, and the age kind of shows up a little bit. Mark, all together, are you pleased with the signing? Do you feel like it was a pretty, it was a big addition, a big significant upgrade from what we had before? And what are your thoughts on it all together? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, the, the mental sharpness at, at the Mike linebacker position, the ability to not just... As, as I kind of spoke about Mike linebackers in Washington the past few years at the snap of the ball they're often paused and, and trying to read what's happening and, and not playing fast um, and Wagner is the exact opposite he's not just playing fast he's anticipating exactly what's going to happen and gets to spot quicker than other players that don't have all the extra added responsibility of playing Mike um, so that's that's on its own a huge upgrade um, the anticipation and understanding of stuff on play action big upgrade um the coverage i, th I think will be okay um the only concern i have is as i said the tackling in space um but overall uh, he's still a pretty good player uh, still a very good player um in, in certain aspects of his game and better than anything washington's had at the mike linebacker position in in quite a while um so yeah i think it's a good signing and, and obviously the the off the field stuff is is speaks for itself i'm saying this jokingly but i also being there at the same time we watched frankie Luvo last week we all broke on the film and we saw how he's playing with his you know his hair on fire and running down the field screaming on the field it's kind of nice having an aggressive linebacker core as opposed to one that was reactive so it's kind of nice seeing the whole you know anticipatory smart linebackers that actually get up fields so i do like that aspect of it um it sounds like we're going to pivot in a moment right i just kind of see that yep. one echo yeah in that's moment. that's that's all I've got on Wagner, so. Cool, we'll um, go there in a second. Let me uh, kind of highlight some of the people in the chat. Uh, Utah, he said, it's so comforting knowing that we got this, that, you know, Bobby Wagner's play and his high IQ on the field for this year. I agree. Uh, Colin said, Wagner is the 22nd highest APY for linebackers. is getting paid to play a lot. It's kind of what Nick alluded to, that thousand snaps per season. And then Colin also added, it's a check down league at the moment, so that could, that could be a problem potentially with Bobby Wagner. So something to kind of keep an eye on. All right, let's kind of pivot right now. So I think, you know, besides Bobby Wagner, I think Austin Eckler kind of like got people excited, but also kind of raised some eyebrows as well because, you know, me coming from a fantasy perspective, I know this is a film breakdown, but like Austin <laughs> Eckler was a touchdown generator for years, right? It was like, you know, 20 touchdowns, 18 touchdowns in 2021, 2022, had a significant slowdown last year, um, and, you know, in Los Angeles. So I'm kind of curious to see what Nick's thoughts are on this. Do you want, want to give like one minute kind of summary or one sentence summary before we jump into yeah. this? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's kind of weird making the PFF guy talk about running backs, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter, right? Exactly. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we all kind of know what Eckler brings in terms of, you know, his running ability, his receiving ability, and, and all the touchdowns he scores and stuff like that in fantasy purposes. Um, 
and again, he's getting up there in age and, and we're kind of hoping that last year was just kind of, you know, injury riddled and he couldn't really be his full self. He's, he's kind of talked about and you kind of hope that he's back to his hundred percent self there. There seemed to be a little bit of a slowdown and, you know, kind of his burst and athletic ability and whatnot. But again, you're just kind of hoping that's chalked up to the injury and that's, um, you know, it's not that worrisome. Um, but again, it's, it's a, what, two year deal, right? Well, you can get out at one year and mm -hmm. it's not something that is again, going to break, break the bank. You're not paying a running back $40 million. It's, um, it doesn't stop you from drafting another one, you know, late in this round. It doesn't stop you from giving Brian Robinson a lot of carries. So, um, I think again, it, it's more something that, you know, you bring in a veteran guy and, um, I, I think it's really going to help the quarterback a lot as well, because what I'm going to go over is absolutely zero running ability, um, and no receiving ability. And it's all basically pass pro. Um, and it, it's something he's pretty good at and something again, that comes with playing a lot of snaps and knowing what you're going to see, knowing what to expect from defenses. And, um, for him, it's, it's kind of him always being in the right position. I think that is an underrated element, Nick, and I'm glad you're highlighting that because I think as a veteran, it will be important to protect our rookie quarterback, whoever it may be. Um, I think Austin Eckler does kind of offer that receiving check down ability as well. That's you know has been a hallmark of his career throughout this, you know, throughout his career. So I'm interested to see some blocking. Let's break it down, Nick. Let's go for it. Yeah, the the fun stuff for running backs, <laughs> but um, you know they, they don't. There's not many opportunities where they're kind of in a one on one block. Um, you know, there we have him with you know 56 pass block reps this year. So again, mm -hmm. there's not too many, um, which kind of skews the grading a lot. So um, I wouldn't look too heavily into that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, his he's again, he's seen it all. He, he knows where to be. And um, I kind of went through all of his path blocking reps. And I really only saw maybe one or two where you can kind of blame it on, you know, a missed assignment. Um, the rest were kind of, you know, just maybe he lost and whatnot. But again, you're not expecting running backs to hold up and pass row for three to four seconds. Um, so just going through some of the ones that I kind of wanted to highlight again here, we have the Jets kind of scrambling at the snap and again, he's scanning and, and quickly picks up um, the linebacker blitzing here, you know, Quentin Williams, this is the job of running back. You can just kind of see how quickly he reacts here um, and just kind of gets his eyes straight to the linebacker, knows exactly where that threat's gonna be um, and gets over there and saves Herbert, lets him get it off at the, at the last second. Same sort of thing here. Again, shotgun, know where you need to be protecting your, for him here, he knows with these four down linemen, he knows that um, he's looking at these linebackers, any sort of blitzers that they're adding on. Um, they're all sliding to the right here. So you know that he needs to step up and take this linebacker and he does, and he does just enough, cuts him there. And again, allows the quarterback to get some time. So for Eckler, it's, you know, he might not win every single rep. He's not going to overpower you in, in the pass pro. That's not what any running back's going to do, but understanding your assignment being able to cut guys down like this is is, is key and um it's something that he's really good in and knows where he needs to be at all times um there's going to be some some bad ones sprinkling sprinkled in here i don't know which ones are which yet but um again knowing where your weakness is knowing who your threats are he's looking at these two linebackers here a little hesitant here to kind of get there but gets over there scans it quick enough hits the linebacker, gives Herbert just enough time to throw it. Or I don't know if that's Herbert or Drake May there, but um, <laughs> gives him just enough time to throw it there. And puts him on the ground too. I think with this whole, you know, pass protection element, he's going to be on the field more than we maybe anticipated, right? Because like, I think like we know Brian Robinson will probably be the early down back, but you know, maybe Eckler will have a little next little carved out niche as a blocking back, you know? Yeah, I mean, again, it's you, you want experience out there. Like you want, especially for young quarterbacks, you want, they don't have to think about what the running back's going to do. They, they can trust Eckler. They can trust him mm -hmm. to be where he's supposed to be, pick up who he's supposed to pick up. Um, and again, that's what he's going to, look at how quick this is. Again, scans the, scans the whole line, knows exactly where he's going to be weak, sees the linebacker blitzing, picks him up, does his job. And that's all you're going to ask of him. You don't need him to be, you know, overpowering or anything, but just gets himself in the way and, and does his job. I think this is the, uh, yeah. So again, you're not going to, he's not going to be overpowering in pass protection here. Again, little play action fake sees with this linebacker blitzing. No, he's, he's just got to put his face in there. Just kind of get in the way. Again, he's not going to be overpowering um, against Patrick Queen there. He might get blown back, but he gives his quarterback just enough time to 
to release it to the check down. Um, not many people are going to be able to stay in the way of Patrick Queen kind of rushing at them like that. So again, but he knows where he needs to be. This one, I believe this is the right one. Might be one of my favorite reps of pass pro I've ever seen from a running back. Um, he basically single-handedly picks up a, a stunt here from these these two linebackers. Um, yeah. So again, 23 is going to be the penetrator on this this stunt. Um, eight's supposed to loop around. The center looks to be a little late on you know who to pick up. And for for Eckler, when you have these these sim pressures, these these double A gap looks from the linebacker. One of those is going to be his guy if they both blitz. Um, center's going to take one, depending on which way he goes, and the other one's for for the running back. But um, center takes uh, eight here, and he's going to take the penetrator, and again, just knocks him out of the way, picks up eight on his own, basically picks up two guys at, at, at once all by himself there, gives Herbert just enough time to, to make the throw. It's one of the best reps I've seen in, in pass pro in a very long time to, to pick up a stunt basically all on your own as, as a running back. Next one here against the Patriots. This one's more just kind of, again, scanning the protection, finding your weaknesses, gets lucky with this guy falling on the ground. Um, but then again, still is able to give enough of an effort here against that free rusher to, to give Herbert time to step up and, and make the throw. Just being in the right place, being in the way, being in the, in the spot that you're supposed to be in is, is the biggest thing here. Same thing here. Again, you see the blitz coming from the linebacker. Get yourself in the way, cut him down. Easy, and then go for the finish. I like that at the end. Goes for the little finish there. Doesn't really get it, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's kind of what all of this is. It, it's just kind of him being in the right spot. There, there's some where he's gonna, you know, he's gonna miss at times because you're not expecting a running back to be able to hold up in pass pro um, all the time. But you know, again, understanding what you're gonna get from from a defense here and, and know your assignment. Again, it's another another stunt here with the two linebackers understanding what you're getting and picks it up and does a great job. I think very similar to Bobby Wagner, having a kind of a heady, you know, cognitive player on the offensive side of the ball will help out the quarterback and protect him and help him with the protection. Makes yeah. Sense. I mean, again, it's just, it's just about knowing where you need to be. And this just kind of shows, you know, again, his, his intelligence here. I, I kind of like this for kind of how quickly you can sort of see him flip his head and, and read this. Um, he sees with with these linemen stunting in like that or slanting in like that, that they're setting up either some sort of blitz from out here or the linebacker is going to loop around. Um, they're not going to slant like that unless there's some sort of threat. So um, he recognizes that pretty quickly, finds the linebacker and knows he's blitzing and picks him up. Again, wouldn't need to because the ball is already out in time, but uh, it just kind of you know shows that he knows exactly what's coming, um, even when there isn't a threat there. Nick, I don't know if you had the chance to kind of run the numbers, but like, was Austin pretty efficient this year for the most part? Was he not efficient? Like, what do you think he has in regard to actually like contributing in regard to like the run game, the pass game? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it again, it, it looked, it looked like he lost a step a bit at times. Okay. Um, but again, you're banking on that being injury related. And he kind of talked about it a lot that it was injury related. But again, they're always going to say that if, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it, if their money's on the line but um yeah so you're just kind of hoping he gets back to that that form and it's if he's a hundred percent i don't see why he would you know slow down um and i think that you can kind of see a, a nice little uh, a duo there but um eventually there are some bad clips here i can't remember where they are but um there are some where he does he does kind of mess up but that's not one of them um again cutting the block quarterback probably doesn't need to scramble but kind of live and die when, when you're running back cuts like this it's kind of live live or die there and um that was something i saw consistently with him um he's a smaller guy uh yeah, yeah you had that one i had that one as well um yeah. he's a guy that because he's smaller he he knows that he's not going to be able to stand up to these guys as, as nick's done a great job of, of pointing out he he's so good at identifying blitzes um and i actually have a clip i do want to show um so um if you want to find your bad clips, I can I can show them one good <laughs> one Here, here's one. Here's one of them. Um, okay. But I, um, I mean, it, it just kind of shows the, the example again, like, like Mark said, he's, he's not going to overpower you. He's not going to win often in pass pro. And again, this one's kind of one where he, he was a little too aggressive in, in taking the penetrator on this stunt. But um, yeah, there's, there's some bad there. I mean, again, you, but if you're expecting your running back to hold up in pass pro consistently and 
for three, four seconds, then um, it's usually not going to work out too well. My question to you guys, you, obviously you watch the film more in detail than I do. I guess was Antonio Gibson more of the primary like pass protector blocker for a guard, the quarterback last year? And I guess how does Eckler compare? Do you think like did Gibson have some flaws as well? Like, Mark, I see you nodding. Do you have any input on that or thoughts on that? <clears throat> yeah, Gib- Gibson was their third down back. So he okay. was the guy that would stay in and, and, and pass protect. Um, he wasn't bad and, and he was he's obviously a bigger body than Eckler. So he mm-hmm. could... Um, he could sustain blocks a little bit better, but um, Eckler's experience um, is something Nick has made a great point of of how well he identifies different stunts and, and different blitzers, um, and and that really stood out to me. I I spent the day watching Eckler because for I'm I'm writing a, a post on him tomorrow, um, and he's the thing that stood out to me was how well he identified stunts and he was and blitzers and. and he was so good at identifying where the pressure was coming from. Now, once once he identified that guy, he didn't always pick him up. As Nick said, like he's a smaller guy, and, and he tended to go for cut blocks. And as Nick has kind of shown, he, he cuts guys, and and that can work effectively at stopping the initial rush. Um, but those guys can then get back up, and, and the pressure can still get there pretty quickly. Um, but again, as Nick has said, running backs aren't expected to sustain blocks for two three four seconds that they're there to pick up the initial blitz and and get the quarterback time to get the ball out quickly so um he does a really good job of that because he's he's very smart very cerebral and and understands pass protection schemes and where the threats are coming from um so that that is what stands out that's what puts him probably above gibson for me as a pass protector is that Gibson, when he identified where rushers were coming from, he he probably was better gu- guy at taking on those blocks because he's a bigger back. Sheer size, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Eckler doesn't have a, very many mental errors. He's he's very very good at understanding where the different blitzes are coming from and, and getting in the right positions. Uh, whereas Gibson had one or two plays where he'd be like, oh, I completely missed that I was meant to be blocking that safety coming from the right side and I was trying to release left into the flat as a receiver, you know? So um, those, those were the kind of plays Gibson missed, which Eckler just doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we I think we have him with, you know, one maybe missed assignment on all on the pressures he's given up, but, which that's kind of what you're looking for from the running back again. You're, you're not expecting him to hold up all the time in pass, bro, especially for someone his size, but... He still does hold his own here. I mean, th- th- this is kind of teach tape in, t- in terms of a block here. Um, takes a linebacker completely out of the play. So th- there are still times where he can hold up and uh, and, and hold his own. Um, which one is this? All right. Yeah. So again, knows exactly what's coming from the from the defensive line here. Again, both of these guys are slanting inside. So he's looking at them the whole time. So he knows that either this guy's going to come loop around or there's going to be some sort of threat here off the edge. So that's where he's got to get. Um, so he knows that. And right after the play action fake, goes and gets his guy and takes him out of the play. And that is all I've got. Good stuff, Nick. Let's kind of throw it back. So I guess we want to touch on Eckler some more, Mark. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I got I got a few things of Eckler. Um, I Nick covered the pass protection very well, but I just wanted to show this one rep um, because it's a fun one uh, where the Bears have kind of similar idea where, that we've been looking at with linebackers, but they're, they're not both in the A-gaps. Um, they, they kind of move them around. And what they run here is called a coffee house stunt where this linebacker bails out and fakes like he's going to drop into coverage. Um, and quite a lot of the time, what that will do is get guys to be that are looking at him to be like, oh, okay, he's dropping off into coverage. I see him turning his hips and, and looking to run. I can go release into my route. Um, but Eckler is smarter than that. He's wiser than that. And he understands that sometimes guys fake that. So you'll see here, uh, linebacker at the snap kind of bails out and just fakes like he's going to drop into coverage and he's looking out here for a threat. And again, a lot of running backs in this position would be like, cool, he, I've seen him step back. I'm releasing into my route instantly. But Eckler knows, actually, there is still a huge threat here. Uh, there's a big gap. Uh, and there's a reason there's a gap is because this guy's coming right back. Um, so Eckler stays patient, identifies that that linebacker is actually still coming. Um, he, do- he doesn't release into his ra- route. And he gets back in and makes the block. And again, as Nick said, the, the blocks not, aren't necessarily always great. Um, but the understanding of where the, the, the pressure is coming from and... and 
where the who's rushing and, and having the patience there to understand that that guy wasn't actually dropping into coverage, he was still a threat, uh, gave Herbert the chance to get his throw away and goes and completes a pass. Yeah, um, I mean, half the battle for running backs in terms of pass protection is just getting in the way. I mean, disruptions, right? Just, just in the want way. them to get in the way <clears throat> because on that last play, like he showed it, it Herbert was loading up to throw no matter what happened, if that guy was, you know, beat the block or not. He does just enough. You might not say he wins on that rep, but he did just enough to give him enough time to, to kind of throw it. Exactly. And it's it's a play that a lot of pass, running backs in pass protection, the moment they see the, the linebacker that was a threat turn like they're going to drop into coverage, they immediately look away from him and think, I'm running my route now um, because that's the more fun thing to do is go catch passes. Um, so I thought I would show just a little bit of, of what he is as a pass catcher uh, because that also plays into how you can pass protect with a running back. Um, so first, a uh, little choice route, very basic thing, but uh, if you have a running back that can do it, it adds a lot to your offense. Um, so here you're going to have him come out of the backfield. This receiver is going to go and cross in motion, and you're going to get a linebacker kind of isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that can either break inside, sit down, or pivot outside, depending on the leverage of the linebacker. Um, very simple stuff, but it's stuff that's extremely effective in, the, in, in a lot of offenses. Again, you get... Um, all the space in the world in the middle of the field you get the linebacker kind of isolated on on Eckler and, and Eckler is able to just give him a quick stick and, and break inside wide open over the middle nice easy gain first down um and again you'll see it from the end zone angle here you're going to get this linebacker who is playing initially with inside leverage Eckler is able to get him to overcommit outside uh, with that little duke outside that gets the linebacker to just open himself up a little bit more outside and opens up this huge gap in the middle of the field and uh, what's easier for a rookie quarterback than a nice, easy throw right over the middle to the running back for a nice, easy game? Um, just as easy as screens. Um, and and Eckler stood out on a couple of games that I watched in, in screens game. Um, and uh, you see this one here uh, against the Bears again. They're just going to run a simple screen. They're going to bring this receiver across on a jet sweep fake. Uh, they're going to fake a run. Um, and then Herbert's going to kind of pivot out to the right side, and then he's going to throw it back. Um, as, as part of a nice big play action fake um and so you see there's the fake he kind of pivots out then Eckler kind of pulls up and when he gets out here he doesn't exactly have a great screen in front of him he's got his left tackle blocking one guy uh these are his guards um his center's left back inside so he's got his two guards here and you've got a free defender coming off the edge um so as Eckler catches this pass he's kind of got nowhere really to go he's just got to make this first guy miss uh and he does that. He does a nice job getting inside, making a miss, and then he's off to the races up the sideline. And yeah, this is, I think this was week six or seven this year. Um, this was after he'd come back from his first injury. Um, so he's still obviously suffering the effects of the high ankle sprain that he had, but he was playing through it. Um, but he still had enough burst to get down the field. Um, anticipates this safety coming across, takes the hit, dives forward and, and gets the touchdown. Um, so, and you'll see a better angle from from here with the with the screen where um, he's able to get out in front, um, make this guy miss again. Free defender, um, his linemen haven't done a great job getting out in front of him. Makes the guy miss with a nice little cut, and then gets back outside and, and sprints down the sideline. And he gets a nice little wall here. Um, you got the safety coming from deep, um, and the safety does a nice job making up grounds. But you can see he just does a real smart thing of actually bending into the contact so that when he gets hit. He's not going to step out of bounds. He's going to step inbounds and able to dive for the end zone. Um, and that's what he does, dives for the end zone and gets the touchdown. Um, this is the exact same screen that they just ran, uh, this time against Dallas a few weeks later. Uh, so again, Dan Quinn got the kind of first look at this. Uh, they block this a little bit better, um, but then they get downfield and then Dallas kind of rallies to the ball a little bit more. Um, and you see some nice patience and, and ability to, again, some shake to, to beat some guys and make some guys miss. Um, he kind of sets up this block here by jumping inside and then jumping back outside to set up that block and not only that block but a couple of others um, and then he's able to again dart inside uh, before eventually getting wrapped up so he's able to maximize the screens even though he maybe isn't quite what he once was or you know last year was battling some injuries and, and didn't necessarily have the burst that he once had he still has the smarts to to set up blocks and, and maximize plays um, and hopefully you know when he's fully healthy this year and hopefully stays fully healthy he's able to have that burst along with these smarts to, to set things up um 
so and, and as as a receiver out of the backfield again you're he's quite a small back um so you can quite often get him leaking out to the flat without being seen uh and this is a little play action fake where uh, they have a tight end inserting inside and these guys all do a nice job selling the fake you get both linebackers biting up on the run fake and then they're kind of engaged in blocks and, and Eckler's kind of just here leaking out to the flat with nobody accounting for him um so he makes the catch in the flat out here he's got all this space to just sprint up the sideline um mm. and and picks up a huge gain so um those are some ways that he can be used to receiver again you get these linebackers that are thinking run it looks very much like a run uh they're, they're biting up on the run and Eckler's just here leaking out casually into the flat and wide open huge space nice big yards with the catch ability um and so, Mark, i'm kind of curious with the last play i mean obviously it was great do you think it was more execution by eckler or was it just a great play design like why did he get so wide open there <clears throat> yeah it's it's a more good play design than than anything eckler necessarily did but again he's kind of a smaller back um mm-hmm. so it's easy to lose track of him behind especially big offensive line that that they have um with the chargers so um you can kind of sneak him out into the flat and, and sometimes he gets lost um so yeah, it, it was a nice play design more than Eckler being amazing himself, but um, it's something that because of his size, he's able to um, kind of sneak around a little bit and, and, and leak out to the flat without being without being seen. Um, this is uh, one that I wanted to highlight as well. Um, it looks like we're running low on time, so we're probably going to miss Chin, so I'm going to stick on uh, Eckler. And, and this is one where... Um, it's a note that I, I learned from Jay Gruden. He used to talk about it with Chris Thompson all the time. Is running backs are often taught to pass protect first and, and make sure they're protecting, but then they need to get out into their routes and, and be part of the passing game because their routes have meaning. Um, and you'll see that here is, um, and what Gruden used to talk about with Chris Thompson is that he was so quick to identify if there's any rushers, yes, then stay in and protect, obviously, but no, get out and run your route and, and impact players. And, and you'll see that here is Eckler steps up to pass protect, pretty quickly identifies that none of these linebackers are coming, no, no DBs are coming. It's just the front four, so then he can get out into his route. And the result of that, as we run this through, again, he's, he's looking to protect, nobody's coming, no obvious threats, gets out into his route. And the result of that is suddenly this linebacker over here is having to be a flat defender um, on this side so instead of covering the tight end that he was covering he has to peel off and, and account for Eckler running into the flat and what that means is as, as we run this on that's going to leave the tight end wide open over the middle of the field um, and they're going to hit that for a nice big gain and that's all because Eckler was real quick at getting checking his protection and getting out into his route and is able to impact coverage defenders by just getting into his route and then running his route. It's not that he's run an amazing route, it's that he's got out of the backfield, done his protection assignment quickly um, and efficiently, and then got out into his route and forced this guy to come off and, and cover him, which leaves his the, the guy that this linebacker was covering wide open over the middle of the field, and they pick up a first down. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great play to just kind of like, again, show the importance of running backs in the passing game, even if they're not touching the ball. Because they they impact the the routes are drawn up to you know affect certain defenders and and like Mark just pointed out there that that route was drawn to kind of bring up that flat defender so you have that wide open tight end route and if he's not quick enough to do that that route is not as open as it is so um, yeah it's just a love that play good, good pull yeah. Mark um, and then <laughs> one last little bit I wanted to just finish on with with Eckler in, in pass protection is. Um, uh, running backs, obviously, it's important that they're able to block, but um, more and more thing, uh, common in the league nowadays is that when a, a running back stays into block, the, off the, the defense will have a guy do what's called green dogging, which is why I've got this in a green arrow here, is, which is adding on to the, to the rush. And so what this is here from the Bills is this linebacker is blitzing. Um, and so Eckler is responsible for the linebacker, so he's going to slide across and protect and pick him up. But what that means is that the Bills were playing a man coverage behind it. So this linebacker that was in the box was responsible for Eckler. So he's initially going to follow Eckler across the line of scrimmage and then realize that Eckler is staying into block, which then means he's free to just join the rush and add on. Um, and in this situation, it works out okay for, for the offense because uh, he's a little bit late to recognize what's happening. And again, Eckler does a nice job identifying and, and making the block. And 
and the ball's coming out before this guy is able to impact the play. But because Eckler is staying into pass protect, they're able to add on an extra rusher. So the effect of him staying into pass protect isn't necessarily always the best because it can sometimes result in extra rushers and, and more pressure on the quarterback. So sometimes the option is to just let Eckler go out and run around. Um, and you'll see that here again against the Bills later on in the same game. They're going to bring, uh, I think this is a safety off the slot or off the tight end, um, and he's going to blitz. And sometimes you would have the running back pick up this blitzer off the edge and, and protect, but they're just going to let him run hot to the flat um, because what they know is going to happen is if this guy blitzes, the running back can get to the flat and they've got this linebacker having to get out all the way out to the flat to try to make a play. Um, so we'll run this through and you'll see it essentially becomes a game of can the quarterback get the ball out to Eckler in the flat before he's either hit by this blitzer or this linebacker can get out there. And you'll see the quarterback quickly sees the blitz coming, gets the ball out, and um, Eckler's able to make the catch in the flat before the linebacker gets out there. And that again gives Eckler some time to then make a move. And and this is a rep where you see that Eckler does still have something. And again, this is late in the season when he's you know, supposedly had two high ankle sprains and, and playing hurt, but he's still able to turn back inside, make that guy miss, get up the field and, and get a first down. Um, so the point overall is that, yes, he's a, he's a good pass protector and that will definitely come in handy. Um, but sometimes, it, especially in, in the modern NFL, the, the trend is if a running back stays in to protect, you're going to get add-ons and it's going to cause more players to rush. Um, so sometimes you want to let the running back release into a route, make him be a hot receiver um, and get the ball out quickly to him because he can go make plays like this. And, and Eckler has, as it's shown in that one, he went and made a play like that um, and went and made a first down. So there's there's more than one way for a running back to pass protect. And, and sometimes it's running a hot route and, and catching a ball in the flat and, and going and making a guy miss and, and picking up a first down like that. So, um, yeah, I think he's a, a nice pickup and he's someone that's going to be a real valuable piece for whoever they, they end up drafting at, at, at two overall. Look at Easton stick there with that play. Yeah. I saw that. Doing a lot of PT on his, his reps out here. So it's a good again, stuff for, I mean, I don't know. We're not talking about quarterbacks at all, but that's just a great kind of quarterback play that, you know, might again is only like a one yard throw, but it's, it's good quarterback stuff there. Very good quarterback play. Once once again, I want to thank the 1,500 people that are watching across all platforms on YouTube, Twitter, and uh, you know everything. Uh, yeah, Twitter and Switch. I appreciate that. If you guys have any questions for Nick and Mark, we'll be closing up pretty soon. We're here for you guys. Um, we you know we promised you Jeremy Chin, but I guess we'll shove that for next week. We went in depth just with read, blocking. Just read for, Mark's article. <laughs> just read Mark's article on Substack <laughs> as well. Thank you for that plug. I love that. Um, let's kind of break it down, guys. One little kind of sentence summary to kind of like you know bring closure to this. Um, I guess overall, generally positive. Are there positive remarks in regard to getting Bobby Wagner and Austin Eckler? And what do you what do you kind of envision their fit this upcoming fall? I guess Mark, we'll start off with you. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, we we talked about Bobby Wagner uh, being the Mike linebacker and, and not coming off the field. I, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Um, and and uh, it will be interesting to see how the guys around him fit. But I think that's kind of going to be he, you you plug him in the middle of that defense and then let him be because. You know he's proven that he can do that um so yeah i like that pickup and the the off the field stuff with the veteran leadership and, and stuff that he provides is all obviously a, a huge benefit to to the young players and and hopefully someone like a jamie davis or whatever can can learn from that um i, I certainly think jamie davis has some maturing to do as a, as a player and probably a person off the field judging by certain things but um you know learning from bobby wagner is not going to hurt so um, yeah, that, that definitely is a, is a nice pickup. And then Eckler, I was kind of skeptical of because at the time they signed him, all the running backs were getting signed for like 10 or 12 million average. Um, and I was like, please don't be spending that on a running back that's 28. <laughs> that That is yeah. not wise spending. But I'm working for PFF, they, man. You already got it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, was, I was a little bit worried. Um, but having spent basically the entire day, day today watching him, um, he still has a little bit, bit of juice as a runner and, and, and that's fine, but I don't think he'll be used as, as a runner so much. It, it's going to be the pass protection that Nick did a great job showing, you know, how good he is at identifying stuff and, and getting himself in position. And, and that is more than half the battle for running backs. Um, and, and he does it consistently well, uh, which is a, is a huge plus. 
um, but then also he still has some juice as a receiver and, and um, you can use use him in different ways and, and you can get him out of the backfield on hot routes and, and sometimes that's just as effective as, as pass protection. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I like that pickup. The, the more I've watched of him, the, the more I like that pickup as well. Gotcha. Nick, are you in general agreement? Anything added if you want to say about, you know, what Mark said? <clears throat> you know, I, I I love the Bobby Wagner signing. Um, I mean, honestly, both of these linebacker and running backs aren't really typically positions of, of high value in terms of, um, you know, if we're looking at the analytics side of it. But again, I, I think both of them are, they're, they're cheap deals and they're not going to really break the bank. And it, it brings you a veteran presence that they haven't had at the linebacker position specifically in a very, very long time. And you know exactly what you're going to get from them. And you don't have to worry about what they're going to do. And and it's Eckler is the same. I mean, it's it's a great thing to have for a young quarterback is, you know, a veteran experienced running back who knows where he's supposed to be, knows what he's supposed to do. You don't have to worry about, you know, a young running back next to you learning the exact same things that you're learning. You can just trust him to to be where he is and and you know that's again that's half the battle is just doing your assignment and, and, and doing your job and um the thing with Eckler is I was again with Mark a little concerned about you know paying running backs and whatnot but it seems like a pretty cheap deal and from what I've seen and what Mark kind of showed is that he still has he still has that wiggle still can kind of make guys miss um I think it's the you know the more open field long sort of speed that he's kind of lacking right now which which is understandable but um still being able to make people miss is, is, is kind of the key Gotcha. So Mark and Nick, thank you guys for always breaking down the film, making it very digestible for all of us to watch and kind of, you know, take some information from. I appreciate it. Uh, next week, it sounds like we're doing one more free agency uh, pod, maybe just kind of focusing on Jeremy Chin and, you know, whoever else we kind of, you know, tickles our fancy. If you guys have anyone you want us to focus on, uh, please drop that on the Twitter feed just so we can kind of keep a um, perspective on it. Uh, you know, we'll be looking at some draft picks coming up too. Maybe JJ McCarthy. I know he's kind of a hot topic in commander circles now too. So we'll see how that goes. Um, once again, thanks for everything, guys. We'll see you guys next Tuesday at 4.30. Peace out. See you guys.